Very nice. Good day, friends. Welcome to learning to play your tenapan. We, myself, Louis Nurse, and Darren Shepherd, will be facilitating you in understanding, appreciating, and developing your capability, your proficiency to play the tenapan. And in today's lesson, we will be concentrating on the rules of how to care the pan, how to use your pan. And as we progress, we will be learning different melodies and techniques that will facilitate and support you in your playing of the national instrument of Trinidad and Tobago. play so beautifully. I, I would expect that to be able to play like that requires commitment and dedication to that instrument. That instrument is what we call it, the tenor pan? This is a tenor pan and this particular instrument starts from C. It's a C, a low C tenor pan, which is basically the standardized instrument that most steel bands use in, at this point in time. And, and I mean, to, as to play any other instrument, and indeed this is an instrument, it requires a lot of practice, a lot of dedication, and I mean, general care and man maintenance of your instrument is very important. Right. So how does one really care for a tenor pan? I mean, we, we tend to see pans out in the street, we tend to see pans on a rock, but if one has to have a personal instrument, how would you package it or care it? Well, priority um, has to do with, uh, in terms of how you store the instrument. Um, in most cases, you want to have a proper case that protects especially the belly of the instrument because it, it goes out of tune pretty easily if it gets knocked around um, and then most surfaces for steel pans nowadays um, the surfaces are chromed um, chromed with water and, 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 and stuff like that you need to use a um, polish keep the pan clean make sure it doesn't get wet um, and you're not supposed to have it in the sun too long either because this, the heat, I mean, causes the notes to expand and corners causes the, the notes to contract. So that interferes with the tuning. So you should always try to be, have it at room temperature, properly clean, and if you're not playing it, have it in a case. Right. Is it important to have a tuned instrument? Well, as in any instrument, you want to have a properly tuned instrument because, I mean, that develops your air badly if you have a, a, a poorly tuned instrument. Um, there are not many guys in the world who tune these instruments, fortunately for us, we are the mecca of the steel band, so we, um, we have guys here, but I mean, they are dying breed. So you must pay particular attention to the care and the tuning of the instrument, so that again, you develop hearing the correct thing. What, what about, um, in looking at the instrument, things like rust, how does one treat with things like rust and, 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 and that affects the pan as a... As well, again, if you, if you, maintain it properly it doesn't get wet and if it does you dry it off quickly and put a coat of polish on it and clean it then you should be fine right what about hanging of the instrument i noticed how that uh, there's a is there a particular way that the pan is set up when, when one sets up the play well priority is um you must have a proper stand and um, these days we use electrical wiring and fish line because you don't want to use metal on metal, it causes the, the pan to vibrate. Another thing is, again, a proper stand, and it must be at proper height, um, usually around your waist area, where you don't have to lean forward too much, or it isn't high enough that it inhibits your movement with your elbows. Right, so what you're saying is that setting the pan up, giving yourself maximum movement uh, from the upper part of your body, Freeing your hands 
for maximum flexibility is what is what allows you to 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 get good uh, connection with the instrument. Well, because of the, the nature of this instrument, it has a lot of notes, and the load, notes are smaller than most of the other pans. In fact, all. So, playing on a, on a single surface, you really need to use your wrist a lot. Um, it's important to stand at the center of the instrument and give yourself enough leverage because depending on the particular key you might be playing in, you might, your hand movement might lead toward, the, lean toward the right of the pan or the left of the pan. So it varies, you know. But generally you stand behind the instrument and um, you try to use your wrist at most times. Is there any exercises or that one could do to improve your hand or your wrist? Well, I mean, pan playing involves hand movement predominantly. And um, it's important that you develop rolling techniques, um, not only rolling on single notes, but rolling on chords as well. And all of that stuff we'll get into later in the program. But those are the fundamentals. Eh? You learn how to strum and stuff like that. So basic techniques, playing techniques, very important. Right. Let's play another song. Let's just let's play together. The, the, it's the song we started with. What, 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 we, what we want to identify is you look at the pan, and get yourself accustomed to the sound of the pan, and the way that sound is is massaged. Try to get the sensitivity that goes with massaging and strumming and touching the pan stick to the pan surface. Last segment, you were reminded of the, how important it is to care and appreciate your pan as an extension of yourself. That the instrument, whatever instrument that you play, in fact is the medium by which you express your musicality. And respect for that instrument is an integral value that every good musician must possess. And especially as we are treating with the pan, which we consider in Trinidad and Tobago, to the, be the most important instrument for us. It's our national instrument, and it's the instrument that was created by us Trinidad and Tobagoans. So, in this section, we're going to continue to understand the basic techniques of playing the pan, starting with the pan stick. So I'll talk to Darren. Darren, we're talking about the pan stick. Well, it's important that we have the right type of stick. Um, stick shouldn't be too long, and you should have the appropriate rubber on the stick so that it favors the lower notes as well as the higher notes when you're playing. It's very important that you hold the stick between your thumb and your index finger. Not too tightly, giving the stick room to bounce when you hit the notes and the notes vibrate. So that's between your thumb and your index finger, both hands. Another very important thing is that you not raise the sticks too high off the instrument because at many times that causes you to play too loudly. So you should maintain about an inch, no more than two inches off the surface of the note and emphasize on using your wrist when you play the tenor pan, because again, all the notes are in close proximity, so you want to have freedom of movement 
between each node using a wrist. So, so you're saying, Darren, that you don't pong a pan? Definitely not. Definitely not. It's a musical instrument, and your approach should be playing. I mean, long time we used to say we beat pan. A lot of pan men still say that, but it's an instrument, and you play instruments. So, apart from the key, I mean, your general approach to playing the pan, I mean, it's all about your wrist movement and treating the pan delicately, even while you play. Right. So, so that the hand technique. Uh, let me see that hand technique again. Let's show it up. The stick is between the thumb and the index finger. Yes. And try at all times to use your wrist to play each note. Right. And what we're saying is that in, in, in playing the notes, use that two inches off, off the surface of the note, where you concentrate on the wrist activity rather than muscle activity of the hand. Yeah, and, and, and again, that would vary whether between whether you're rolling or you're actually playing a fast passage. I mean, the height that you raise, you stick off the, the surface of the note would vary, but you must have some control, and you don't want your sticks to be up in the air because that causes you to play louder than necessary. That's right. So uh, what you're saying is that controlling the wrist is important to get the right uh, sound from the instrument. Yeah, the tonality is not only in, in the tone is not only in the instrument, but it has a lot to do with your playing techniques as well. Very interesting. And what about how you stand? Well, you want to stand at basically at the center of the instrument, giving yourself freedom of movement to the left or to the right. Um, the pan should be at a comfortable height, almost waist height, not too low that you have to bend over, not too high that again that it inhibits your, your movement with your elbows and stuff. Interesting. Now, would the, if I am a right-hander, or a, and I, you, the tendency would be that I would want to play everything with my right hand. Yeah. And my left hand will always be my follow-up hand. But does that work on the, on the pan? Well, that's a bad habit that a lot of players adapt. And what we want to stress on this program is that we develop both hands. Even if you're playing on the right-hand side of the pan, your left hand must not remain dormant because, I mean, you want to be able to, to develop both hands that if you're playing on the left side of the pan and you're a right-hander, you have even distribution because one hand would tend to overcompensate for the other. Right. And um, do you, you, you like to demonstrate that, um, Darren, and, and how it would work with one hand playing and one next hand playing and maybe get a, a cross to show how the two hands must relate to each other? I'll use the C major scale to demonstrate that. Um, where we try to get even distribution between all the notes. And the C major scale would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. And what we try to do here is uh, the first note, we play with our left hand, that's C. The second note, we play with our right hand, that's D. The third note, we play with our right hand as well, because it's in close proximity. So we, use, we do E, right hand. The fourth note, because we play the first note, C, with our left hand, we now play F, which is to the left of C, with our left hand as well. So therefore, in, in a four-note movement, both hands play two notes. Then we use the left hand to play the fifth note, G. Then the right hand to play the sixth note, A. Then we use the left hand to play B, the seventh note, and then we end again on the octave C with the right hand. So we go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And the C major scale would be C, D, 
F, G, A, B, and C. And what we try to do here is uh, the first note, we play with our left hand, that's C. The second note, we play with our right hand, that's D. The third note, we play with our right hand as well, because it's in close proximity. So we use, we do E, right hand. The fourth note, because we play the first note, C, with our left hand, we now play F, which is to the left of C, with our left hand as well. So therefore, in, in a four note movement, both hands play two notes. Then we use the left hand to play the fifth note, G. Then the right hand to play the sixth note, A. Then we use the left hand to play B, the seventh note. And then we end again on the octave C with the right hand. So we go C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And the C major scale would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. And what we try to do here is uh, the first note, we play with our left hand, that's C. The second note, we play with our right hand, that's D. The third note, we play with our right hand as well, because it's in close proximity. So we use, we do E, right hand. The fourth note, because we play the first note, C, with our left hand, we now play F, which is to the left of C, with our left hand as well. So therefore, in, in a four note movement, both hands play two notes. Then we use the left hand to play the fifth note, G. Then the right hand to play the sixth note, A. Then we use the left hand to play B the seventh note, and then we end again on the octave C with the right hand. So we go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Right. So, friends, you realize how important it is to not only know the location of the notes on the pan, which we will share with you and remind you in just a minute, but in understanding that both hands have to be applied to the instrument with equal authority and with equal proficiency. And since the pan is divided into a right side and a left side, you will find that some notes on the right, some notes on the left, but in playing the scale, you will be using both hands in the most convenient ways, especially when the notes are closely located so that you will be able to use both hands to execute. So we're going to turn to knowing the notes on the pan. Let's get back to the geography of the pan. Uh, okay. The notes on the right side of the pan, starting from middle C, we, use, we have C, then we have G, we have D, A, E, and B. Now friends, on the right side of the pan, the notes are written in fifths. And what we would like you to do is join us in practicing to get that location right. Let's go through together all the, the notes on the right side of the pan, starting from C. Looking at, we're going to play your notes on the left side of the pan, starting from C. F, B 
flat E flat A flat C sharp F sharp ah. Okay the notes on the right side of the pan, starting from middle C, we, use, we have C, then we have G, we have D, A, E, and B. Now friends, on the right side of the pan, the notes are written in fifths. And what we would like you to do is join us in practicing to get that location right. Let's go through together all the, the notes on the right side of the pan, starting from C. We're looking at, we're going to play the notes on the left side of the pan, starting from C. F, B flat, E flat, A flat, C sharp, F sharp. Ah. Okay. The notes on the right side of the pan, starting from middle C, we, use, we have C, then we have G, we have D, A, E, and B. Now friends, on the right side of the pan, the notes are written in fifths. And what we would like you to do is join us in practicing to get that location right. Let's go through together all the, the notes on the right side of the pan, starting from C. looking at, we're going to play the notes on the left side of the pan, starting from C. F, B flat, E flat, A flat, C sharp, F sharp. Let's play the scale together in, in the key of C. And let's, we will look at how Darren moves his hands from side to side in finding the notes on the pan. Three, four. Send an order. Let's come back. Let's come down. Send an order. Let's come back. Let's come down. Send an order. 
Let's come back. Let's come down. Scales allow us to play from C to C and, and understand where our hand placements go. What's the next thing that we should look at, Darren? Well, a, 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 a very important technique in pan playing is rolling of the notes, where you play a particular note with both hands in order to sustain the note for a particular amount of beats. Um, and the, the basic techniques for rolling is uh, left, right, left, right. And this is something you could do with pencils on a table or use your sticks on any surface to practice your rolling. And you start very slowly, left, right, left, right, and you pick up the piece and eventually you get very fast on the particular surface. And what you want to do is have an evenness in distribution between the two hands. One hand shouldn't raise higher than the other. It should be even. So I demonstrate that on the C note, which is the closest note to you. Left, right, left, right. technique and it takes time to develop the fluency and the continuity between the two hands. In order for us to understand carefully the rolling technique, you must, must keep in mind that rolling has to be done within a certain time sequence, a certain amount of beats or a rhythm as we call it. And in this case, we're going to be talking about four beats to the bar of four-fourths time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that rolling, the technique of rolling, is, is structured within a rhythm sequence. And in this case, I'm going to remind you again, we're using one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So Darren is going to roll using the first three notes of the C major scale, which will be C, D, and E. Those three notes. Darren. Demonstrating rolling on the uh, first three notes, as Louis said, C, D, and E for four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. This brings us in to another part of, of our techniques training where we use our hands in, in extension. For example, to move between C and D and to move between D and F. D and E, sorry. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So there's a hand movement not only of your wrist, 
but of your entire hand as you reach for each note. Let's do that again, Darren. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And it played coming back down. E, D, C. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very nice. No. In order for us to find us this rolling technique, we want to introduce the opening bars of the song Yellow Bird. And in this selection, we, the notes we're going to use is G, F sharp, G, E, F, F, E, F, G, E. Those are the notes. G, F sharp, F, and E. These are the notes we're going to be using. And Darren will demonstrate the melody, the open ambit of that melody using the rolling technique. Now, listen to it very carefully and look at the technique as he repeats that pattern. This time we're going to play it again and I expect you to join us. Remember the notes are G, F sharp, F and E. And let's play together, Darren. Three, four. One more time. The notes we're going to use is G, F sharp, G, E, F, F, E, F, G, E. Those are the notes. G, F sharp, F and E. These are the notes we're going to be using. And Darren will demonstrate the melody, the open ambit of that melody using the rolling technique. Now, listen to it very carefully and look at the technique as he repeats that pattern. This time we're going to play it again and I expect you to join us. Remember the notes are G, F sharp, F and E. And let's play together, Darren. Three, four. One more time. The notes we're going to use is G, F sharp, G, E, F, F, E, F, G, E. Those are the notes. G, F sharp, F and E. These are the notes we're going to be using. And Darren will demonstrate the melody, the open ambit of that melody using the rolling technique. Now, listen to it very carefully and look at the technique as he repeats that pattern. This 
time we're going to play it again. I expect you to join us. Remember the notes are G, F sharp, F, and E. And let's play together, Darren. Three, four. One more time. So we're going to quickly go over the, the practice, how the one practices to get the rolling technique. Take it slowly again, just show them on one note, take it slowly and bring it right up to speed. Again, this is something that you can do on any surface. You can do it with pencils, you can do it with pens, you can do it with your sticks, you can do it on the wall, you can do it on a table surface. As long as the surface is flat, you start off left, right, left, right. And you get faster. Always striving for an even height on each stick. One more time, Darren. Well, friends. I'm hoping that together we will be able to share with you playing the tenor pan. Today's lesson we learned on how to care and appreciate the pan. We understand the techniques of using the wrist in a balanced fashion. How you stand, how you place the pan, how you locate yourself with the instrument. And the technique we have sh shared with you is the technique of rolling and your homework will be to practice the rolling technique using the notes G, F sharp, F and E in the opening stanzas of Yellowbird. Until next time.